What's up guys and gals, your host with the most griever as always, bringing you guys the latest chapter review for the Hunter's Guild Red Hood chapter number 13. If you guys want to know why this review is so late and while, uh, why I'm not as uh, bouncy as I usually am, definitely go check out the video that is either posted before this video or will be posted shortly after this one explaining my rage at recording a bunch of stuff and having no audio. But that being said, why don't we jump into this particular recording of the same review that I already did and uh, let's just get underway with this because I like this chapter, this chapter's fine. Um, more importantly, one of the key things I wanted to talk about was Grimm's attitude towards Velo in this chapter because yeah, okay, so they have this plan we're, we're sort of tying up the, the loose ends of the bonkers story from the end of chapter 12. We're tying that up. Grimm is basically saying, hey, we don't, like, it's not about heroes. It's not about villains. It's not about hot-headed people or level-headed people. What we need are smart, strong, and fast people. You can be main character or extra. And once again, tying into that whole idea that this is a storybook. It's not fourth wall breaking, they're, but they're always talking about every single character is making reference to storybook persona, genre persona, uh, uh, writer's persona, like uh, Cinderella and all them, they were talking about in the mayor and stuff, they were all talking about pages of a story and stuff and a book and a fairy tale, which is the aesthetic here. We have a lot of characters mentioning being a main character or not, being an extra, the genre they're in, the pages, writing your own story. There's a lot of references to like a almost a fourth wall break but within universe it's very well done very interesting and i really like it i'm sure there's a term for it because it's been done before but to this extent so far only 13 chapters in done extremely well as far as i'm concerned now this is where uh bonkers ends up saying fine yeah 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 i'll i'll you know like Grim says, you, you know, you'd waste your training. Debonair and I were there. We couldn't save your village as well as we wanted to. We're sorry. But at the same time, someone like you, you're, with all your training and all your strength day to day, like I'm not going to be impartial. I'm still going to fight this tooth and nail for the exam. However, you should become a hunter. So at this point, he's got his resolve and boom, there you go for plan D. Now plan D is basically for Vilu to... Uh, capture himself but around Grimm's waist and we all know you know the certain form that Grimm's waist takes so Bohm takes the handcuff speed blitzer as they sort of go forward then run away and then trick fake Bohm Velo locked in place to sort of weigh Grimm down doesn't really work because Grimm's amazing but uh, it does work to make sure that the other two escape now this is where the one key thing in the in the chapter that I wanted to talk about was Grimm's attitude towards Vila. Because basically she says, now you, you choose to sacrifice yourself way too often. Now Vila is like, this is a very, um, I had so many great analogies in the original review, guys. I'm sorry, I'm still upset about all that audio being lost. But um, pretty much how I summarized it was, what she says right here, I'll just read it because that'll make it easier, is, now, you choose to sacrifice yourself far too often. This is like, what, the third time Velo's done this? Been the guinea pig, been the scapegoat, been the etc. And said, it's okay, the others will come and rescue me. Grimm says, that may work here, yes, this is just an exam. But don't do it so much in the field. Putting your life on the line is different from throwing it away. Now, Velo says, I'm sorry, ma'am, and that's the end of that particular conversation. We move on to some other stuff with bonkers and, and uh, Teetly or whatever. But realistically, this is the part that I focused on the most in the original review because right here, what she's saying, it's almost, it's older sister vibes, it's motherly vibes, it's, it's guardian vibes. Because what she's saying is, is sort of like, yes, this may be just an exam, but you are taking, and this is just my interpretation of it, and the best way I can put it is, she says all that, but what she's actually saying is, you might be, and Velo is doing this, he's saying this is just an exam, so it's okay, but his tendency to do this could become a habit, and if it becomes a habit in a real life or death situation in the field, as Griffin points out, that's bad, that's wrong. So. Um, it's sort of, I remember giving the, uh, the Avengers speech, the whole Captain America and Tony Stark thing going at it, right? 
uh, the whole, uh, you're not the guy to lay down on the wire and let the other guy crawl over you. And Tony Stark comes up with the quip, I would just cut the wire. Always a way out, is there? Right. So what Grimm is trying to tell him is basically, you choose to sacrifice yourself too often. That's fine for right now, but it doesn't work here. Because you're not, you're treating this exam as there's a safety net. And in the real world, there is no damn safety net. You sacrifice yourself way too much. That's not what hundreds are about. That's not what life is about. You need to be able to go forth and go, there's option A and B. I choose option C. You need to be able to think outside of that box. You know, you're in that box and you're over here. Box is over here. You're not here. You're here. You need to be able to think that way. In a multiple choice questionnaire, if A through D is the wrong answer, then the test is wrong. So there's another trick to it. There's always a third option. There's always another option. If A through D are wrong, option E. Every time. You have to be able to think that way. And I think that's what Grimm is trying to say in her own way. But she's worried that Velo is going to have this habit, regardless whether it's an exam or if it's a life or death in the field situation. He'll throw himself on the grenade before thinking, wait a minute, why don't I just, like, he's going to die or I'm going to die. Why don't I kick the grenade away? Option C, right? Option number three. Yeah, Vilu's thinking a little too black and white about the situation, and he's too quick to say, hey, I'll sacrifice myself. And Grimm doesn't like that attitude. And that's why I say I get that older sister vibe from her. That sort of, that motherly vibe. I don't know what how you guys interpreted it. But that's the way sort of I interpreted it. Is that she's mad that Velo is so willing to, as, as she puts it, putting your life on the line and throwing it away. Two very different things. And right now, you're towing that line too much for my liking. That's basically what she's saying. And I really enjoy that. I had a lot better points in the original review. Sorry, guys. I'm just trying to remember what I said. So, anyways. Um, the rest of the chapter goes on. Uh, Vila was thrown back in the cage. Uh, we have Titley and all them. Uh, uh, Tit yeah, Titley uh, and, her, and the sister and stuff. They're still in the coal mine area so that they're facing off against Debonair. Debonair recognizes this was a smart idea. You, I can't use... I'm still physically strong as shit. So I hope you have a plan for that because even if I can't use my heat curse, my, you know, the hex of the heat or whatever, you're screwed, you know. So nonetheless, unless you have a better idea and this is where Bonkers comes in, superior numbers, jumping them with all the other combatants and they're like, you know, we're superior numbers for the win. We're going to take down Debonair and then we're going to get the hell out of here. And this is where, of course, uh, Titley and Bonkers, they basically have a bit of a heart to heart. It realistically... I know that some people would probably complain about the pacing at this point because people have been complaining about the pacing. But in my mind, you can't have your cake and eat it too. Because some people I've heard, at least one or two Reddit posts that I did read back when I did the original view, I did read a few people complaining that Bonkers went 182 very quickly. Once Velu gave him a, and Grimm basically convinced him he could be a hunter, he's now 180 flipped. He can see the good in everybody and boom. Now... The thing is, this is justified because, as he states in this chapter, he was there in the last exam. He was there. He knows, basically, what went down. And he says, I didn't do anything. I saw what was going down, and I did nothing to, like, aid or stop or do anything. But remember that I was there. And I'm telling you right now, Velo is not... And I'm sure we'll meet this character, the one that betrayed them, who became a hunter, or, or didn't or whatever. I, I forget which. But is basically saying, listen, Velo isn't that person. I know it's hard for you to trust because of that incident. And I get it. But I was in your shoes too. Doing nothing but looking at the past and not moving forward. That's what I've been doing this entire time. And I nearly reached the brink just now. And it's your time to help us and we'll help you. You got to give us a shot here. Otherwise, neither one, none of us are getting out of this. So, like, you got you to gotta have faith. You got to have trust. Sorry, like there's just no other way. And this is not unjustified because Bonkers was there in the exam. Bonkers knows what happened. He recognizes it and that's why he's talking to Titley like this. Now, some people are complaining that Bonkers is going a little too like, now he's the motivational speaker. He was in the woes of, nah, being a hunter doesn't matter, blah, blah, blah. And with one little chat with Velu and Grimm, now he's completely able to school this guy on it. But, and that, that was one complaint I heard, one complaint. 
However, one, one complaint, but the thing is, is that you can't, once again, have your cake and eat it too. People can't complain about the pacing, which I still say that this is probably going to end. Okay, chapter 14, not so much. Maybe by 15, the exam will be just about over. Uh, by chapter 15, the exam is going to be just about over, and the exam has been a lot of fun. So far, 15, 13 chapters of the series have been really good so far. I haven't really seen a bad... Honestly, chapter 2 or 3 was probably the worst chapter thus far, so it's only improved. Chapter 1 was fire, 2 and 3 were kind of eh, and then from 4 on, we've had a pretty good series running, hitting the ground running pretty good as far as I'm concerned, And but I've heard people complain about the pacing. they got to pick the pacing up. Well, you can't complain about Bonkers as a character right now, jumping in to get Titley on, the, on board, but at the same time, then complain, well, the pacing was too slow. Like, you, you, you got to have it both ways. Either the pacing is going to pick up and you're going to lose a, a little bit, a small midgen, and be able to complain about characters. But the people that complain about the pacing can't complain about the characters as far as I'm concerned because you can't have both. You either let it go at its own pace and you let the character development happen more naturally or you have faster pacing. You can't have both. Sorry, it don't work that way. So, and to judge a to judge a series on thirteen chapters at this point, get out of here, get out of here. I ain't got no time for that. So, yeah, um, I forget what other points I made about this chapter. There was more stuff I talked about and stuff, but as I said, this is a re-recording of a review I already did a couple days ago, and uh, no audio. So. Uh, hope you guys understand that uh, this is not one of my best reviews or anything like that or any of the reviews coming out right now. But uh, anyways, I still really like The Hunter Skilled Red Hood. I think Chapter 13 was fine. What did you guys think of it? Let me know in the comment section down below. And as always, like, comment, and subscribe. Don't forget the fourth and most important thing to drink responsibly as I always do. And we will see you guys back here next time for Chapter 14. And I don't believe the rumors that the series is going to be axed. It's not that popular yet. Give it a chance. Let's give it a chance. Let's wait. Let's wait and see what actually happens until we get a reliable source that tells me otherwise. I think this series is going up and not down. But let me know what you guys think, and we'll see you back here next time. Peace out.